What is up gamers? This video I'll be going over commons and rares you should own from Dragon Empire, Dark States, and Brant Game. Next week I'll be doing a video for Keter, Stoicaea, and Lyrical, so stay tuned for that. For this video, let's just jump right in. For Dragon Empire, there are a couple different ride lines you could get. There's the Vergila ride line, which is really good for decks that are aggro grade 1, or decks where the ride line is just not that good, because Vergila will let you ride up to grade 2 for just a Soul Blast instead of having the discard. And then the grade 2 Vergila, whenever you ride over it, will check top 7 for any grade 2 card to add to hand. Next we have the Bob Saga ride line. The grade 1 lets you search for the Sword or Shield order, and then the grade 2 allows you to add it back to hand. In some decks it's optimal to have the Bob Saga ride line to deck thin 1 out of your deck, and you essentially freely ride up to your next grades. Some decks also just use the grade 1 and, and not the grade 2 if they have a really good grade 2 in the ride line. So this ride line is just generally pretty good as well. And then one last ride line is the Shoujo Doji ride line, which is just good in any stealth deck. So if any stealth deck comes out in the future, then this ride line is a primary candidate to be used in it. Now for actual main deck cards, really big one is Brachial Force. It's a grade 2 that whenever it hits, it retires itself to draw a card and retire or something else. So this is really good on giving a deck aggression, since you can freely call it early game. It also punishes players who do call a board down early, because this can hit a rear guard as well. So if this hits a rear guard, then it replaces itself and ends up killing two things, which swings tempo to your side really well. It's also good in decks that just naturally give the units a ton of power. So like Gandiva can play this. El Calibra in the future can play this, just because of that. Back Your Force is a card that consistently always sees play in some form of new Dragon Empire deck. Then we have Crumb Stego, which binds three cards from the opponent's drop zone and is a 23k beater. So this is really good in decks that want a ton of cards in the opponent's bind or benefit from stuff getting bound. It's also good in metas where there's decks that want specific numbers of cards in the drop zone. So like Philander is a big example, or Night Rose in the future. Then as two cards that do similar things, we have Koke and Tanya, which both are on play, Counterblast 1, call a grade 0 from your drop zone. These aren't as important in standard, but these can be pretty decent in premium. But there is a chance these could show up at some point in standard, if there's Another deck that likes having a specific grade 0 and play like Trickstar in the past. Next we have Ethan, which is a 9k power grade 2 that whenever your Vanguard's attack hits, you can retire it to counter charge and draw a card. So this is probably the most generic counter charge this nation has. It's this and Dragon Monk Gojo, which if it hit during the battle it boosted, you counter charge 1. So both of these are pretty okay. Ethan is just better in decks that have restanding vanguards, so like Varga or Overlord. Ethan is an option in there, and there's definitely potential for this card to possibly show up in the future. For some other grade ones, we have Wing Dragon Pursue Terra, which whenever it boosts, you Soul Blast 1 and give the boosted unit that whenever it hits a vanguard, you retire something. So this is good in decks that have restanding units. So sometimes Overlord plays this card, so then Overlord now has on hit kill something. You can have it boost Brachio Force, so now Brachio Force kills two things whenever it hits. It's just like a generically solid card. Then we have Cannon Detero, which whenever you play a normal order, you can Soul Blast 2 to give two units plus 5k for turn. So if you're playing a deck that has a ton of extra soul that it's not really using that much, you can play this. And this can work pretty well in tandem with Drag Resonance, which is a common back in set 2. And you give your Vanguard the skill that whenever it restands, all of your front row units get plus 10k power for the turn. So the combination of these two cards lets you just get a ton of really free power onto your board. This can also be good in decks that play in order very early on, and this can let you hit some crazy numbers on your rear guards. Next up we have mid hat, which whenever one of your units stands by an ability, you can retire mid hat to draw a card. So mid hat's really good in decks that have a restand effect. It doesn't have to be vanguard or rear guard, it could be either. So Varga plays it, Overlord can play it, Vergila could play it. A lot of different decks have the potential to play this card in there, and mid hat's just really good in formats where you want to try to have a clean board, so you don't lose value from the opponent's retire effects. And then lastly for grade ones is Orlando. While it's in soul and your opponent's rearguard was retired during the turn, you can Camblast 1 to call it, and then whenever your grade 3 or higher vanguard attacks, you can put it into soul and give it plus 5k power for the turn. 
For some orders, there were some pretty good ones. Outside of Drag Resonance, the other primary grade 3 order is Best Harvest, which allows you to draw a card every time you retire during your main phase, which is really good in decks that retire a lot, so Eugene and Gandiva really like this card. And in Dragon Empire, there's gonna often be more retire effects that come out of it, and Best Harvest will just generally be a really good option in those types of decks. Then we have the order Breath of the Flame Dragon, which is an Energy Blast 2 and allows you to check top cards equal to the amount of open rear guards the opponent has, and then call a rear guard. And if you retired something, that rear guard gets plus 5k. So again, this can be good in decks that retire their units, but this is also a really good early game card, because typically the opponent will not have called that much. So you can use this order to find a specific piece you need, and you can aggro back with. This can be good in formats where decks are generally clearing the boards really well. And then lastly is the Blitz Order Defensing War, which is a 10k shield, that also gives one of your Guardians the effect that after it's retired from Guardian Circle, you add it back to hand. So Defensive Roll is really cool on allowing you to reuse your triggers as shield. So you can guard with a 20k front trigger and then use Defensive Roll, add that 20k shield front back to hand, and then guard with it again on the next attack. You can also do cool things where if you have rear guards that have really good on play effects, you can intercept with them and then use Defensive Roll on them. So then they get put back into your hands, so then you can call them again on your next turn. There's just a lot of cool lines Defensive Roar adds, and it's just like a generally really good card that you can play in basically any Dragon Empire deck. For Dark States, we don't really have a ride line that's like generically good with a bunch of different decks. There is the Devil package that you can play in quite a few different decks. You have the Tiny Devil, which searches top 5 for any of the Realm cards. We have the Devil Knight, which whenever it's rested by an ability from the Grade 3, you can count plus 1 to restand it. And whenever it stands by an ability, it gets plus 5k for the turn. And then the Grade 3 is whenever it attacks while boosted by Tiny Devil, you can rest the Devil Knight in order to Soul Charge 1 and gain plus 10k power and plus 1 crit. So this can be good in decks that don't have specific rear guards they would want to play, so like Chrono Jet could play this. And it actually did see some play in Chrono Jet whenever Jet first came out. And it's also really good in decks that have the ability to restand the rear guards because the grade 3 is not once per turn. So if you have a way to restand the grade 3 or call a new one out, then you can keep restanding the knight in order to give the knight more power and then swing with plus 10k and a crit on the grade 3 multiple times in a row. Then we have Selfish Engraver which on hit soul charges one, and at the end of battle it attacks. If you have 10 or more in soul, you can put it in the soul to counter charge one. So this is just probably the best generic counter charger the nation has outside of the grade one cat, but that's a triple rare. We also have flaming pony, which combined itself from soul to soul charge two, which is really good index that want high soul counts or just want to accelerate through their deck as fast as possible. We have Zargon, which whenever it boosts, it gives the boosted unit the ability that whenever it hits a vanguard, you can put two cards from your drop zone in the soul. And it's good in decks that have restand abilities or want really specific units in their soul. So Drajuled has played it before, Chrono Jet has played it before. There's really a lot of decks that you can consider Zargon in and we'll probably see play at some point in the future. Then we have Jewel Core Dragon, which is a 13k attacker or booster that goes in the soul at end of battle. Just a really good early game card. There's Gomon, which is good in decks that have a vanguard that puts things in the soul from the rear guard. And then it gives you two card guard district for the whole turn. Really silly, goofy card that at some point is going to be really good in a deck. And then last grade one is Quenlu, which can go in the soul to give a rearguard plus 2k and also have grade one or higher guard restrict. So a primary deck that really likes this is Chaos because they have Mikanis which restand at really high power. And Quenlu just makes it harder to guard those attacks, especially since you can't perfect guard. So Quenlu is just good in like rearguard swings that go really tall or rearguard swings that attack multiple times and sometimes both. Then for orders, we have Cage of Furious Star, which calls something from your soul and gives it plus 5k. We have Prison Luring Lamp, which puts three different grades from drop in the soul and then draws a card. We have the Blitz Order Walk the Dark, which can be played from soul for Energy Blast 3, and there's a 15k shield that goes into the bottom of the deck at the end of the battle. And then another Blitz Order, Fancy Knight Parade, which is Energy Blast 2, and allows you to guard with a unit that isn't a Sentinel or Overtrigger from your soul and give it plus 10k shield.
And then lastly for this video is Brent Gate. Really big one you should have is Taser Lage because it prevents decks that are unable to remove rear guards from being able to get large scale multi attacks from their effects. For counter chargers, we have Mega Grago, which at ML boosted in hits, you counter charge one, and Satellite Repairer, which can energy blast for the counter charge whenever you play it. Then for decks that want specific high grade units in their deck, we have Secondal, which can bot deck them, and then you can still blast three to draw a card afterwards. So this is really good in decks like Ava. Then another really good grade one is Schwarzer Eins, where whenever your grade two or greater set order is put into order zone, you can put it in the soul to draw a card, which is really good in decks that play high grade orders and also need a ton of soul. So a big winner from this card is Welstra. And neatly enough with Welstra, since their orders go onto rear guard, from face shoots maximum at the end of the turn when face shoots goes back in the order zone then Schwarzer Eins can be used to go into soul and draw a card allowing you to clear your board easier and also be able to fuel your soul for fry heights in future turns but Schwarzer Eins is also just generically good in most other decks at the moment and then the last unit is Goldog Dragon which whenever it's discarded from hand and you have a set order in your order zone, you can Catblast 1 to call it, which gives you free multi-attack in decks that have ways to discard during the battle phase. Then for some orders, we have Freezing Wave, which is a 10k shield for every rested set order in your order zone, which a lot of decks have ways to rest their orders. So like Heroes, Daisha, Ava, Archite are like primary users of this card. One Blitz Order that hasn't really seen much play yet, but is very cool, is Sharpened Fighting Spirit. So it's for Energy Blast 2, and you can discard up to two set orders from your hand, and you get 10k shield, but for each discarded order, you can draw a card and get plus 5k more shield. So this can remove a bunch of dead set orders in your hand, and also be up to a 20k shield and be able to dig deeper into your deck. At some point, this card will be good in a deck. Gravidia is able to play it because they add so many meteors into their hand. But there hasn't really been another deck that really likes this just yet, other than maybe Orphist. Which, speaking of Orphist, we have Eclipse Moonlight, which is a world order that you play for Catalyst 1. And really, you just make a Shadow Army token out of it, which can be good in decks that want aggression early. So something you've seen in the past is Gravidia playing Voodoo in the red line, which searches out Eclipse Moonlight. And then they have a free 15k body on their next turn in order to be aggro with, making Gravidia on future turns a lot scarier. For another Blitz order, we have Fluctuate Buster Barrage, which allows you to guard with two more different named grade two or higher units from your drop zone. And you also get 10k shield added with it, which can be pretty solid in decks that grade 2s or 3s that gain shield or have effects whenever they're put on Guardian Circle. And lastly, we have Refablishment Dock, which is Catalyst 1 to draw a card whenever you set it, and also gives all your grade 2 rearguards boost. This is often paired with Habitable Zone as a one of, and then Habitable Zone will be able to search out Refablishment Dock, but Refablishment Dock is just a generically pretty solid card as well, that you can play in decks that will cycle itself, and if that deck is overloaded with a ton of grade 2s, then this is able to allow you to have more booster economy in that deck. And that's all for part 1. Next week we will go over part 2, which has Keto, Stoicaea, and Lyrical cards in it. So thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you guys in the next one.